Hi everyone, this is the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, July 22nd. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining with us again this week. Now I have some really exciting news to share. The 5% COLA for state and teacher retirees, along with the local option provision that will allow city and town and local retirement boards to also pay a 5% COLA, that language was included in the final version of the fiscal year 23 state budget. It made it through conference committee. It was voted on unanimously by the House and Senate this past Monday. This legislation is now on the desk of Governor Charlie Baker, who has until late next week in order to analyze the budget and make his determinations of what he's gonna support or veto or send back with correction. We are cautiously optimistic that Governor Baker will support this language. We have a strong relationship with the governor in terms of working together on public pension issues, and in particular, the COLA. This goes all the way back to 1997, when then Secretary of Administration and Finance, Charlie Baker, supported our association's proposal to reform the cost of living adjustment and, and redo the law here in Massachusetts and return the responsibility to, of, for the COLA to the cities and towns. Charlie Baker supported those efforts uh, back in 1997. And with his encouragement, Governor Bill Weld at the time signed that proposal into law as Chapter 17 of the Acts of 1997. Um, this law over the past 25 years has proven to be a great success. So we are very hopeful that the governor will see fit to once again support our association's efforts when it comes to the COLA. Now, as I said, the 5% COLA, if, if it is approved by the governor next week, will immediately apply to state and teacher retirees. That COLA payment most likely would appear beginning in your August pension checks. It will be retroactive to July 1st. So that's where it would stand with the state and teacher system. For local retirees, the legislation that's on the governor's desk allows local retirement systems by local option to choose to increase the local COLA above the current 3% maximum all the way up to 5%. It does not mandate that they do it. We cannot mandate cities and towns take action. This is simply providing the option because as we have explained in the past, the retirement law here in Massachusetts, which is known as Chapter 32, the retirement law does not allow local retirement systems to approve a COLA above 3%. So we need special legislation that would supersede the statute for FY23 to allow this greater COLA to be paid. And let's not forget, there's a very specific reason why this is the largest COLA proposal in 30 years. And it's in direct response to the sky high inflation this will provide some much needed relief to retirees living on a fixed income. And we are very appreciative of the fact that the legislative leadership chose to include this in the final version of the budget. And we cannot say thank you loud enough and more clearly to the co-chairman of the Joint Committee on Public Service, State Representative Ken Gordon and State Senator Mike Brady, who have been tremendous champions on this issue. But it goes without saying that we would not be in a position right now to provide this kind of relief had it not been for the dedication and the focus of State Representative Aaron Mikowitz. Uh, uh, Representative Mikowitz is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. And very early on in this budget cycle, Chairman Mikowitz made it a personal priority of his to work closely with our association um, and come up with a way to address the COLA in this year's budget and provide some immediate relief to retirees. Now, a natural question that we get from members, and you may be wondering this to yourself right now, is, okay, we make it a 5% COLA if the governor approves it, but on what base? Well, for right now, the COLA base for state and teacher retirees will remain at $13,000. We had hoped to increase the base this year. Unfortunately, the timing isn't working out in a perfect world would be able to raise the base this year, no doubt. But unfortunately, this is the final year of the three-year pension funding schedule cycle 
um, that exists at the state level, and a two-year cycle exists at the local level. But every three years, the state, the Commonwealth, revalues its public pension systems, both the teacher system and the state system and some other uh, related expenses. And it looks at gains and losses and how well the stock market has done and all, all those sorts of things. And it resets the funding schedule. It comes up with a new number for any unfunded liabilities and um, all the costs related to the system. And it comes up with a budget appropriation number for the next three consecutive fiscal years. And as I said, this is the final year of the current three-year schedule. So the valuation of the Commonwealth's public pension funds will begin this fall. We are going to work very closely with House and Senate Ways and Means, as well as with the Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission, PERAC, um, it, to make every attempt to include within that new valuation a higher COLA base for state and teacher retirees. And what we are trying to achieve is a COLA base of at least $16,000 with the goal of over time incrementally increasing that base to be on par with the average Social Security payment here in Massachusetts. And the reason why I say that is if you go back to 1997 and the COLA Commission that was set up at that time and what we were trying to achieve back in 1997 was come up with a base that serves as a, a starting point, if you will, that's modeled after the average Social Security benefit. Because as you know, public employees here in Massachusetts do not participate in Social Security. So if you are a career public servant, say a teacher, a firefighter, a police officer, anyone who's a career public worker, in many cases, either you are not eligible for Social Security or if you are, you're impacted by the windfall elimination provision and receive a very small benefit. And because of that, your public pension takes on even greater importance. So that's why the, the COLA base being modeled on the average Social Security benefit makes sense. Now, another question that we get quite frequently is, well, why can't the COLA base just be eliminated altogether and apply the COLA to the full pension? Well, the short answer is that that is not the way our public pension systems are designed. It was never intended to pay a COLA benefit on someone's full pension. And to change that policy now and, and start paying a COLA on a full benefit, as much as we would like to see that happen, and it would be a tremendous uh, benefit to all of you and to future retirees, the honest truth is that the systems cannot afford, under the current um, construction of the systems and how they're financed, to come anywhere near uh, paying a benefit on someone's full pension, particularly at a time when we have more and more retirees uh, retiring today with pensions in excess of sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. And that's not to say that those pensions are not earned because they absolutely are. As a public employee, you, you have paid a lot of money out of your pocket into the retirement system. But the payments that you have made and the payments that the government has made as the employer, that is based on what the current assumed benefit structure is. And if we were to add full COLAs, we would need to significantly increase the amount of money that active employees are paying into the system, as well as the amount of money that the taxpayers are paying into the system as the employer. And it's just not something um, that's fiscally um, a, a viable option. I wish it were different, but that's the long and the short of it. So absent that, our goal is to continue to make incremental improvements and hopefully on a, more, on a more frequent basis than we have seen in recent years. Now the good news here is that at the local level, the 102 local retirement systems in many cases um, have been able to address their local COLA base on a more aggressive manner than what the state and the teacher systems have done. Um, and that's for a variety of reasons and that's how the, the system when back in 2012 excuse me, 2010, um, when the law was changed to allow local retirement systems to set their own COLA base, um, the reason why that was done is that the funding ratios and the aggressiveness of how a city or town or a district is approaching um, funding their systems varies. As I mentioned, there are 102 local retirement systems and it's not a one size fits all. Even though we have one retirement law here in Massachusetts that governs all of the systems, 
the approach to funding that system and how investments are being made and over what period of time and so forth, those in many cases are local decisions. And part of that local decision process has been over the last 12 years, what the local COLA base should be. And at the local level, the COLA base ranges from a low of $12,000 all the way up right now to a high of 18. Now 18 is not the limit. 18 just happens to be the maximum amount that a board has chosen to go to at this point. But if a system were to choose to go beyond the $18,000, the law allows that to happen. Again, this is a local decision. And over the past seven months, just in 2022 alone, we now have 28 local retirement systems that have chosen to increase their COLA base and they've done so with the approval of their local legislative body. So we have made a lot of progress this year. I applaud those local retirement board members and local officials and our local retirees for working together to make sure that the success that has been seen at the local level and, and the success of the retirement systems with the pension investing, that that success is being shared with the members of the system who, as we have said over and over again, it is you as members of the system who should be benefiting from the success of, of the retirement systems. So again, we have 28 local systems who have set a fantastic example. I know that we have several systems right now who are either at an $18,000 base or close to it, who are actively considering and working with their actuaries and local officials on plans to move beyond 18,000 uh, to put that base more in line with the average social security benefit, which right now in Massachusetts is just shy of $20,000 a year. So again, I wanna thank the legislature for the steps that, that you have taken in, in allowing our members to be in a position to receive some relief. Uh, we are very hopeful that Governor Baker will make the right decision next week um, in approving the COLA so we can get this money in the hands of our members as soon as possible. If for some reason he vetoes the legislation or sends it back with correction, we do have time next week before the session is over uh, to work with our legislative allies to override that veto. But we sincerely hope that it doesn't come to that and we're taking every step we can to work with Governor Baker in the coming days, uh, answering questions or concerns he or his administration may have to get this done on your behalf. But thank you for your support. Thank you for your advocacy um, coming from our members. It means a lot. And we will get back to you as soon as we have some further information on this. Um, but you can get an update on our hotline, on our website, MassRetirees.com, on the Mass Retirees Facebook page. And in closing, I wanna thank those organizations such as the Retired Educators of Massachusetts and Karen Donato, their Executive Director, um, the Mass Teachers Association, the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts and others who have worked closely with us over the past few months to get this COLA passed through the legislature and who are now working side by side with our association and, and strongly advocating for Governor Baker to sign this into law next week. So thank you again, and we will be back to you with an update next Friday. Take care, everybody, and stay cool.